All right, I'm back with another Destiny 2 video uh, after my big EV spectacular yesterday. Don't miss that. Uh, to talk about something uh, I figured we could use in the downtime here because we are headed toward the end of this season here. And well, I believe at least one more major event is coming. We probably kind of have a date on that, which is the epilogue on, I think it's August 10th. I don't have the uh, thing up in front of me, but it, it's somewhere around then. Uh, and that's probably going to be some sort of big climactic story thing, slash mission, slash whatever. But we have just under a month until then, and that is mostly Solstice of Heroes grinding, which I have already complained about earlier today with the uh, drop rates of everything. <laughs> so you can check out that article. <clears throat> today I wanted to talk about the artifacts. I've talked about this a few times. I think I wrote an article about it last week but I kind of wanted to go more in depth uh, in terms of how I've been disappointed that this literally has not changed at all, uh, except for the actual mods, since it was introduced in Shadowkeep. They have seen how the artifact works, and they think it's just perfectly fine, and we have uh, really altered nothing about it other than the actual rotation of the mods within it, um, even though some of those have been repeats. Um, first and foremost, there are many uh, problems with the artifacts relating to uh, kind of how you unlock the mods, the number of mods you can unlock, the way you reset the artifact. Uh, for starters, resetting the artifact increases in cost every time you do it. I think it starts at 10,000 Glimmer, 15,000, something like that. And every time you do it, it just gets exponentially more and more and more and wipes out uh, large chunks of your Glimmer stores. Granted, I know that Glimmer is not used for that much else, so Bungie thinks this is some sort of Glimmer sink or something. I find I spend most of my Glimmer on changing mods and uh, upgrade modules, since those are 5,000 a pop. Um, but I don't see a reason to do this, so the bare minimum change I would pick for this is not having a cost uh, increased over time. Better yet, not having a cost at all. Uh, so that's kind of my, my bare minimum baseline change is that I don't think this involves, like this should involve any like deep sort of studies or exploration of data of how people use the artifact. Just don't make it cost this much. This is insane. Like all, all it does is make you, it encourages people to experiment less with all these mods that you have painfully designed and crafted, uh, because it costs so much to reset it because you can't just like, you can't skip some of these that you don't want here and just get all the fun ones over here. Like you need to, you could only pick like pretty much two, like I think maybe three here or, well, no, I guess if you pick none in the final row, you can pick more here, but you can only pick two in this final row here. Uh, and then to, to experiment with those, you have to change the whole thing over again. I know a lot of people also run into trouble because unlike me, they do not um, unlock all of these. So if suddenly, you know, they need a very specific type of weapon to defeat champions in something. They have to reset the entire artifact to get, you know, scout load or, or scout barrier, auto rifle barrier, whatever. I always have all five of these unlocked at default because that kept happening to me. And I just got sick of it, so I just stopped. Um, and my main problem with the artifact is I cannot come up with a reason as to why all of these artifacts can't be unlocked. Um, that squeaking is Eevee, of course. Eevee. It's fine. <laughs> it's not as cute when you can't see her. It's just noisy. Um, I don't get it. I, I think maybe the answer is that they don't want... Um, they've, they've complained before about like when they when they went through and, and redid like the artifacts and combined all the loaders into one thing, they didn't want people scrolling endlessly, and this would add at least another page to this, I guess. Something like that. Um, I think they could just drop this down more and have more than two rows per thing. I don't see why that's a thing. Um, but... I. <sighs> And then the other half of it is potential balance issues. I do not buy the potential balance issues thing, though, because the way these artifacts are set up, almost all of them are either lim they're, they're limited by power and they're limited by the amount of slots in these pieces of armor to begin with. So, for instance, like almost you know a huge amount of these are class items or arms. There are very few, and these are legs, but all of these are arms. All the barrier ones are arms. Um, you've got a couple chests, but a lot of arms. There's a helmet, class item. Like half, more than half of these are class items. Uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six out of the ten here are class items, and a lot of them, breach and clear. You can't put anything with breach and clear. Essentially, like if you have breach and clear on, uh, you are essentially sacrificing everything else for that because it's nine. So you have to pick like one of these, maybe. 
So you get like plus five and something, or you'll get one of the very tiny, you know, build type ones. That's about it. Um, but you cannot combine all of these already. So there are already limits in place. And if you're worried about those stuff in the future, you can make these not add up to 10 or make, you, you know, put them in slots where there's not that much room so they don't overlap with each other. Like I can see how, yeah, okay, maybe it's not good to give people access to run a build that has all, of, you know, five of these active at the same time, but they physically can't. There are already limits in place where like Breach and Clear is clearly ridiculously overpowered, but it's fine because it's temporary mod and it's going away. But it is already designed, so you can't compare it with anything, or you can't pair it with anything. So I, I don't see the reason that I can't just unlock this stuff because, like, okay, I want to do the stasis build now. Well, I got to reset the entire artifact again just to get to this point because I've already picked, you know, the two more interesting mods. So I haven't even experimented. You know, Impulse Recycler is supposed to be a really good one this time. Um, like this, you know, but... <laughs> It's it's not actually something I'm I'm playing around with because I'm I'm I don't want to keep resetting my artifact every time I want to experiment with a build. You know, void splash damage for Warmind Cell build. Like these are things I have barely touched because you know I've already reset my artifact a handful of times to just change a couple of these already. So I, I don't see a reason that we can't unlock more of these over time. Um, one suggestion that I, I have heard from a ton of people, uh, I think. QJ mentioned this a lot, but the idea of your season rank, you know, after you get past 100, it's pretty pointless, except for the power grinds, get to that in a minute. But the idea would be that like, as you keep going, motivation would be that you get to, you know, still unlock. So like every everything after 100, I don't, I forget when you hit 12 out of 12, I think it's, I don't know if it's right before, or right after you hit 100 or thereabouts, but you could keep going, get to 200, you know, maybe you have five more of these unlocked, get to 300, five more, and then you're all unlocked and you don't have to mess around with it. So it would be, it still would be a temporary gain, but it would at least be some extra reason to get more power other than the power grind. Um, one more thing that I've, I've seen brought up lately is, well, I think that uh, this, it was a good idea to have the anti-champion mods uh, be put on armor. So now you can put them on you know, you can make any exotic anti-champion. So here's my overload sunshot I have on right now. Uh, the problem is, is like, I still feel like you should have the option to put these on a gun because these take up two arm slots and some of the most important <laughs> mods in the game are on arm slots. So like if you're running double whatever to deal with champions, um, you know, God forbid you need to spend seven energy on unstoppable grenade launcher. You, are repl you cannot use any reload mods, uh, you cannot use any dexterity mods, and those are two of kind of the most important ones. And so like these become like mods you use pretty much only in Crucible. So like I would like to see a situation where like, yeah, sure, I would give up, you know, my uh, major spec mod on Chroma Rush to put anti-barrier on this, but then also have, you know, auto rifle loader on my arm so I can still have that benefit. Uh, I think the flexibility there would be good, and I I, I think the, the current armor system is better than when they were only on guns. I think that is just the ability to get every exotic in that class as an anti-champion uh, weapon potentially is fantastic. I think that was a, an absolutely great decision, but I think they can still go kind of the extra mile here. Um, now we can switch to uh, the topic of power gain in that I hate it. <laughs> Uh, I have never liked seasonal power. Um, it has always been one of the least motivating things to grind, uh, both in terms of the fact that it is temporary. I think in an, in an RPG like this, or something that's a quasi MMO, temporary power gain that goes away after three months never feels good. Uh, just you know, it's it's not on the level of like okay, Destiny's removing planets and Destiny's sunsetting guns, but like it's still it's still in the same philosophy where they are removing something that you have worked for after a period of time. And it does not feel good to, you know, get plus 18, plus 20, plus 25, whatever, which takes like, you know, 50 to 200 hours or whatever it is per season and have that just reset down to zero. And the other problem with this is the way you do it. It used to be only bounties where that was like really the only meaningful way you could increase it because they didn't actually just give you a lot of XP for activities themselves. But um, they switched to where are requests, right? Seasonal challenges. So that's a thing now where these give you larger boosts of XP. But as you can see here, <laughs> there's only four this season. I have really kind of tailed off of these because I just don't 
I don't care, like, at this point. Like, I, I was doing these at first to get to um, level 100 fast in the Battle Pass, because that has some benefits to it and some unlocks. But now, like, I don't really care about Bright Dust that much, and I post 100 XP. Like, I don't care. I'm not going to get 16... Like, I'm not going to specifically grind out 16 Infamy Rakes for, you know, 8x large XP to get a couple more power levels, which are temporary. Um, the game has had a problem with power level for a very long time, where... You know, we've talked about how it's useless for pretty much everything. Um, artifact power does not even exist in PvP modes, and it is um, it doesn't mean anything for uh, contest modifier on GMs. The only thing it really has anything to do with is like the lower levels of ma of uh, nightfalls ordeals and now hard mode raids. And from what I've heard from people who are like the types of people who are really into hard mode raids, people don't love the idea that. If you do want an edge in that raid, you should be grinding hardcore like XP, you know, challenges and, and uh, bounty power because that's the only way, you know, so with, with the plus 10 cap, that is the only way to get a significant bonus. Um, like, as you can see, I'm not even like I haven't even done the pinnacle grind because I don't care. Why is my actual gear that low? I feel like I'm oh, so, so, yeah, OK, these two are still pretty low, but um, like I haven't done the pinnacle grind because it's just it, it's irritating to get one in the slot you want. And it's just like, you know, plus one or two power. Like, I'm not going to go out of my way to do, like, all these random activities just to get plus 10 when the artifact grind is getting me double that just from, like, doing anything, essentially. And, like, I, you know, I, I've barely even been picking up bounties at all since I, I hit uh, level 100. So, like, I could be higher if I wanted to, but it's just, I, I don't see the point of it. And I, I hope that they don't continue to lean on the artifact power system uh, in terms of, how things work and like there is a middle ground here and like i'm not saying i missed the you know 50 power gear grind that came with every season because that wasn't good either but i don't really think this this solution of the artifact power being like you know at least two-thirds of your power gains per season and the thing you need to do to like you know be able to manage you know higher higher tier activities is a good thing um so do I, <laughs> maybe should have started this but do you have anything positive to say about the artifact uh, I think they have done a really good job with the mods. I, I think they have done a, a pretty fantastic job of creating at least a couple kind of must-use, must-have mods uh, per, per season and resulting in some pretty interesting builds. I think everything from this column back is kind of just boring and whatever. And, like, you know, I don't mind the rotation of, you know, different types of weapons getting anti-whatever per season. I think it makes you rotate your arsenal and use kind of things you wouldn't think of in interesting ways. So I don't mind that as much as some people, um, but the mods that are up front here, I do think are, are pretty interesting when they're not completely broken. Like this one, what it used to be where you would stun an overload champion and then it would just glitch it out because uh, the explosive blast would do something. But now that this actually works, it's actually pretty fun. Um, and then, you know, unstoppable breach and clear anarchy is hilarious. Um, energy accelerant, once it stopped, you know, just destroying everything with bug telesto and whatever has been uh, kind of fantastic. That's why you saw me using Sunshot because it just makes that like a hurricane of solar destruction. And it, it still works on a lot of things like Graviton Lance. I think it's still working on Crown Splitter where that just does like double damage on the heavy attack from this, like all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, and again, I would have liked to experiment more with some of these other ones. It's just, I don't want to reset my artifact. Like I think there probably would have been some cool Warmind Cell builds uh, to do this time around, but I don't know. I think until we get fully back to having a mod where arc damage just automatically spawn or like clat or uh, arc damage from your abilities automatically spawn a Warmind Cell. I feel like Warmind Cells are still not really going to be that. I, I'm not saying they're not good. They're just not interesting because to really make it work, you should mostly be using Aikilos weapons that just spawn them natively and just relying on, on splash damage, final blows from void or solar, whatever makes them a lot more infrequent and i am frankly tired of using the aikilos smg for the bazillionth time so i think we need some work there um but i i do think they've done a fundamentally good job with a lot of these mods you know heavy finisher oppressive darkness like you you can remember the good mods that they have created here uh i think they should make a couple more of these permanent like maybe not the most overpowered ones but i thought one of the goals of this was to kind of see which mods people liked and, uh, you know, add them permanently, which I don't remember if that's ever happened. I, I might be missing something, but um, I, I don't think they've really done that yet. So I think they have done a, a good job with the actual mods here, but there is no reason we shouldn't be able to unlock all these. No reason the artifact should cost this much or really anything to reset. 
and the continual leaning on uh, the artifact power grind where the main sources of that are just either bounties or really, really, really long bounties in the form of seasonal challenges. I do not think that's a good system uh, and that needs some modification in some way or another and I hope they don't keep leaning on it as hard as I have been. So those are my kind of expanded thoughts on where the artifact is at and why it hasn't changed for some reason after you know, two years since Shadowkeep. Uh, I, I don't mind the system as it exists as a whole because I, I think these temporary mods have been a lot of fun. And the, you know, kind of shaping the meta with all the different featured weapons is, is something I find interesting between seasons, but I don't understand why they have not bothered to refine this in any real way. So those are my thoughts, and yeah, we'll see uh, what the, the rest of the week brings and if there will be anything to talk about this month or I will have to uh, keep making stuff up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.